الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد محمد بن الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Dear sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I welcome you, all of you, wherever you are, and welcome you again with the first lecture in the explanation of Surah Al Isra. The Surah from the Quran that was recited in Mecca or descended in Mecca. Most of it are from Mecca, except few that from Medina. It is from the surah that are for glorifying Allah, the seven, that started with the praising of Allah. It started the seven. There's seven surah in the Quran that started with praising Allah. Starting in Salah, the first one, where Allah starts, praise is the one who had descended his uh, servant from the sacred mosque in Mecca to the furthest masjid in Al-Aqsa and uh, then Al-Hadid and Surat Al-Hashr and then Surat Al-Saf And then Surat Al Jum'ah. Then the last was Surat Al Taghabun. And the last one, Surat Al A'la. Subhan Rabbik Al A'la. The order of this surah depends on the the words in Arabic. Is there anything uh, um, specific in the hadith about this surah? It's nothing that make it preference over uh, others. Most of the hadith either quick or it is something. Uh, is set up. One of the scholars in his book about the preference in the uh, surahs of Allah, he said there is weak in this one. Uh, and the Sheikh is certain some of these fabricated hadith, and you could tell from the way that the the wording of it, you know, you could feel that it's not, it does not come from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the Quran, you know that if you recite the Quran, no matter what, if you read the Quran, for each letter you get 10 deeds. Uh, the Prophet says that Alif Lam Mim is not one letter, it is Alif one letter, Lam one letter, and Mim one letter. That's 30 uh, deeds in them. Why is it called Al Isra? Isra means the ascended, the one who will take you from the ground all the way to heavens. is the traveling from Medin, Mecca to Jerusalem. This surah also is called the sons of Israel because Allah has talked about them in Moses and how their corruption on earth so you don't fall in their traps in the traps of those who, di who did not obey Allah from the sons of Israel. And that was a very common name for the surah at the time of the companions. <laughs> and also it's called the word of Subhan because it's the first uh, surah that started by President Allah Azza wa Jal. The time that this surah came in, from the toughest times, a most difficult one for in the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It came in the year of sadness. 
that our mother Khadija died. And the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Talib, who died. They used to protect him, give him, support him. So that is called the year of sadness. The disbelievers, they have the guts after the death of Abu Talib, what they did not dare to do to him. So Allah wants to steadfast the heart of the Prophet and to entertain his heart about all the difficulties that he's going through. So that journey, the blessed one that Allah has granted him. The time that it happened, people are used that it is the 27th I forgot what channel and maybe it is one of the weakest Sheikh Islam he said there's no evidence that on which month or when and anything you said something it is nothing that you could uh, track it to al Hafiz Ibn al he said some of this historian they said it happened in Rajab but that's a lie and Abu Sahak al-Harbi said he was taken of the rebel Awad there is no authentic hadith that uh, specify the date and anything that happened is not authenticated on the Prophet and Allah has the wisdom of this. For He wants people to forget the date and not to be sure of it. And Al Isra and Al Maraj, it's from the major events that have in Islam that is authenticated by Muslims late and new. It came as a verse in the Quran grace is the one who took his servant from the sacred mosque in Mecca to the furthest masjid in Jerusalem to show him from our signs and in the Sunnah Allah's Prophet has a lot of hadith about this in Al-Bukhari and Muslim and all others this is from the origins from the type or how there is a dispute about two th issues was he awake or was he asleep second one was it with the soul and body or just with his soul and the obvious from it that is known from the scholars that it happened while he's awake not asleep that's the same of the majority of the scholars. And what is mentioned uh, is asleep, you don't look at it because they said it is narrated from Aisha and Muawiyah. May Allah be pleased with him. And Muawiyah, at the day of Isra, was not even a Muslim. And Aisha was not the wife of the Prophet. So how did they knew that? Al-Tabari says what is authenticated that Allah has took the Prophet from, the f uh, from Mecca to Jerusalem as Allah has mentioned and as is mentioned by the Hadith that Allah took him on the Burak when and he prayed there with the prophets in Jerusalem and Allah showed him from his signs and there is no meaning for those that he was sent by his soul not his body because if it was like that there is nothing to be a, a miracle nor will be about his truthfulness And no one could 
see. Uh, and Allah the Almighty said in his book that he has took his servant. He didn't say with the soul of his servant. So no one can go beyond what Allah Azzawajal said to other evidence. It's very clear. Uh, so this is very clear that he went with his body and his soul and he was awake, not asleep. And he used al buraq as a mean to transport him. A big miracle that Allah has gave, given to the Prophet as an honor to him and to show his status. And to honor him. Thus, start of Surah Al Isra, which is the same thing of Surah Al Najm, where Allah said about the star, if it fell, your friend did not go astray. He is not talking out of his desire, he is inspired. The one who inspired the Holy Spirit is very strong. Yeah. And he's the big horizon. And he was within two uh, throws of the arrows. The soul, the heart did not lie about what is seen. You yeah, have seen it before. You've seen it second time at the Siddharth al Muntaha. That's the paradise of destination where the Siddharth got what it happened and the side did not go astray. He saw from Allah's side the biggest. So praise is Allah, the one who sent his uh, servant from the sacred mosque to the furthest mosque. And the Isra, the journey from the Masjid al haram to Al-Aqsa, but the ascendant to the heaven was from to Siddharth al-Muntaha, then whatever Allah wants after that. Because all the knowledge to all creation stops as Sidrat al Muntaha. After that, nothing know except Allah. Al Bukhari, in his book, in the book of how the prayers were ordered in Isra, he said from Anas ibn Malik that Abu Dar used to say that the Prophet. The ceiling of his uh, house was open, and Jibril descended, and he opened my heart, and he watched it with Zamzam. Then he brought a, a bucket of gold that is full of wisdom and faith, and he put it in my heart. And then he took my hand, and he took me to this light, to this heaven. And Jibril said to the Open. He said, who is this? He said, this is Jibreel. He said, do you have anyone? He said, yes, Muhammad. He said, he was sent. He said, yes. So when it opened, they went to the second heaven. Then Adam was sitting, and he had a lot of people on his right and left. If he looked on his right, he laughed. If he looked on his left, he surprised. And then he said, welcome to the prophet, righteous prophet and the son that is righteous. As you who is this? He said, this is Adam. All those his right are his offspring. They're going to paradise. And on his left, the people of hellfire. If you look at his right, he smiled and happy. If you look at his left, he cried. Then I was descended to the second heaven. So he said, open for the garden. He said, who are you and who's with you? So he mentioned to him that, and then he saw Adam, Idris, and Isa, Abraham, in those heavens, in all seven heavens. When Jibreel passed with Idris, he said, Welcome to the Prophet, the righteous Prophet. He said, Who is this? He said, This is Idris. Then he saw Musa. 
is a welcome to the righteous prophet with the good brother. He said, who is this? He said, this is Musa. Then I passed by Isa, and he said the same thing. Then he passed by Ibrahim. He said, welcome with the righteous brother. He said, who is this? He said, this is Ibrahim, he said. He told some of the companions that Ibn Hazm, that Ibn Abbas and Abu Habb al-Ansari, they used to say, the Prophet said, and then I was ascended until I looked, I could hear the pens writing. So Allah obligated on his uh, nation 50 prayers. So when he passed by Musa, he said, what did Allah ordain you? He said, 50 prayers. He said, go back. Your followers will not be able to do it. So he did. So he put half of it. So I went back and he said, go back again. Your people cannot do it. So I went back. He said, at the end, five is 15 in reward. Five in action and 50 in the reward. And Allah word will not be changed. So he went to Musa, he said, go back. I said, I feel shy to do that. So he went back until he reached to the Sidrat al Muntaha. And it has colors, I don't know what they are. And then I entered paradise. And I saw mountains of pearl. And there's, this is the musk. And Allah saying when it covered the Sidra water, it's butterfly of gold. And then he was given the five prayers. And the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, I was forgiven for those who do not put martyrs with Allah. When the Prophet went back to Mecca, he said, you have seen me in the room. And Quraysh is asking me about my the ascendant. And I was asked about something in the bit of, I could not prove it. He said, I got so sick, like I've never had that feeling. Then Allah opened the Al-Aqsa, look at it. They asked me anything, I will answer them because I'm looking at it. So Allah is saying in this ayah, after he braids himself, that he has the actions that has uh, from Allah Gibbet that he d took his servant Muhammad at night from the second month, which is the best masjid on earth. The prayer in it is 100,000 in anything else. And it is the place of the prophets. And it was... The ascended to Al-Aqsa and then came back. Then Allah showed him from his uh, sign what increase in his faith and his steadfast. So in the beginning of that, it came at the beginning of the night and it was from Masjid Al-Haram. It was authenticated in the hadith that he was ascended from the house of Umm Mahana. And that's why the scholars said that the, the multiplication of the prayers is not only in the building itself, it's actually the whole area. The whole Mecca is considered the Masjid Al-Haram, the sacred area. The Prophet at that night he saw paradise and hellfire. He saw the prophets on their levels. And he kept going back and forth to, and he got through the levels, the highest. What nobody knows it except Allah.
Allah said the one that we have blessed around it because of the abundance of trees and rivers from its blessing that Allah preferred in other masajid except the Masjid al-Haram and the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid and people are required to go to it to worship and to pray in it the people cannot go except to three places of worship the Masjid al-Haram the Masjid al-Haram and this Masjid in Medina then Allah said we have given Musa the book and we made it guidance to the sons of Israel do not take beside me as a reliance the Quran compare between the two books of Muhammad and Musa because their books are the best of books and their these are the best and their prophethood is the highest and their followers the most believers that's why he said we have given Musa the book and that's the Torah and we made it a guidance of the sons of Israel they guided with it in the darkness of uh, ignorance Allah told them to remind them of the days of Allah the favors of Allah do not take a reliance beside Allah tell them we have descended them the book for that to worship Allah alone and to repent back to him and to take him as the only soul sustainer and do not get to anyone beside him uh, from his creations that do not benefit them that's Allah your Lord he have the kingdom and those that you call beside him they don't even have a qutmir if you call if you call them they don't hear you and if they heard you they cannot reply to you on the day of judgment they will disbelieve in your disbelief and they will tell you like an expert the offspring of those we said with Muhammad with Noah and we have taken with our servant Noah he was a grateful servant Noah the second father to humanity after Adam he, he asked Allah that he is he needs his uh, victory and then Allah has opened the spring water the seas to raise and the skies to rain where the flood went everywhere he said with his people a thousand years except 50 he called them to worship Allah only day and night and the ayah Noah is talking about his people who don't want to follow him and they kept putting their hands and their ears and nose and face and eyes He said 1,000 to 50, and only few believed with him. And then it was hard to know that no one will believe with you except those that already believe. So don't feel bad about what they were doing. So Noah said, don't keep any person from the disbelief. If they stay, they will all put your servants, and they will not. Uh, uh, have except someone who is disbelieving in Allah when the Prophet Sallam was asked and got the option to put the two mountains on the people of Ta'if he was patient and he felt and he hoped that Allah will get out of their offspring people who worship Allah alone and that happened Akram bin Abi Jahl he is the one who led the 
the group of death at Yarmouk. Prince is the one who brings the death after life and life after death. So Allah is praising Nuh that he was a grateful uh, servant, uh, grateful to the bounties of Allah. And then you always need to uh, ask Allah's bounties to worship him and then not use it into disobeying him. Three things. You have to be grateful to Allah and thank him and praise him. And the praise is comes with his names and attributes and also with his orders and thank you for it and his bounties and favors. And you have to glorify him. Remember Allah saying, and if you count Allah's bounty, you cannot count it. The human being is wrong and disbeliever. Allah is most forgiven. This is the uh, Allah the Almighty is most forgiven. Allah said in the, in the hadith, you are making mistakes day and night and I forgive all sins. So ask for my forgiveness, I will forgive you also. Allah also said in the hadith, all of you are hungry except for those who ask you. And you are all naked, ask me to cover you, I will give you. And all of you are astray except that I will guide. So ask my guidance, may Allah guide us all. Subhanakallah, Muhammad, Nashhadu Allah, Ilaha Lank, Nastaghfiruka, 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 Nastaghfi